Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover how lifting performance can be used to assess muscle growth. To understand how strength performance can be used to assess muscle hypertrophy, we need to explore what factors actually contribute to strength. There are three primary components of strength. The first is technical efficiency. This simply refers to the trainee's ability to make the lift more biomechanically efficient. So trainees can learn to contract the relevant muscles in a coordinated manner and lift with more effective joint positioning. This is more of a concern for compound lifts using multiple muscles and joints rather than isolation lifts. This is because there are multiple muscles and joints involved in compound exercises, so the trainee must be able to control various joints during the lift. However, for isolation lifts, there is only one primary joint involved and generally only a few muscles that contribute to lifting the weight. Next is neural efficiency. This is somewhat interrelated to technical efficiency, although we are more so concerned with the motor control at a more detailed level. Here we are referring to the ability to recruit all muscle fibers during the lift and maximize how much force each fiber can produce. There is no unique method to enhance neural efficiency, it simply improves by practicing the specific exercise over time. So once the trainee has become technically and neurally efficient, the next contributing factor to strength performance is muscle size. The bigger a muscle is, the more potential it has to be strong. This is because a bigger muscle simply has more raw contractile tissue to become efficient with. So once technical and neural efficiency are maximized, the primary driver of strength will be muscle growth. This is generally a long and slow process, but can be continued for a long period of time. So how does this relate to muscle growth? Well, we can never be 100% certain that muscle growth is occurring, but strength performance in the 6 to 20 rep range can certainly be a good indicator that muscle growth is occurring. This is because once a trainee becomes efficient at a lift, the primary driver of strength will be muscle size. However, there are a number of factors that should be considered to assess if muscle growth is contributing to improvements in strength performance. The first factor to consider is the novelty of the exercise. The more novel an exercise is, the more likely that performance improvements will be from technical and neural efficiency rather than muscle size. If a trainee has never performed a certain exercise, then they will see rapid improvements in strength within a short period of time. This can also occur if a trainee reintroduces an exercise into their lifting regime after some time off that particular exercise. These initial improvements in performance are probably from technical and neural efficiency, not muscle growth. However, once the trainee becomes accustomed to the exercise, we can more confidently say that further improvements in strength within the 6 to 20 rep range are probably due to muscle hypertrophy. The second factor that may influence lifting performance is technique. Assuming the exercise we perform is not novel, changes in strength can be influenced by technique adjustments. This could lead to both improvements or even decreases in performance without a change in muscle size. For example, let's say a trainee adjusts their stance width during a squat, allowing them to lift slightly more weight or more reps with the same weight. This doesn't automatically mean that the quad and glute muscles have grown, the new technique is just slightly more biomechanically efficient. Another example is if a trainee makes their technique more strict so that maximum tension is being placed on the muscle rather than being lost through unnecessary movements of other joints. The trainee will now probably have to use less weight or perform less reps with the same weight for these exercises. This will probably provide a more hypertrophic stimulus for the target muscle even though performance has declined. So the trainee hasn't lost muscle mass, they have just adjusted the technique to make it more strict and effective. So we need to make sure technique is always the same when comparing lifting performance for muscle growth. Next is proximity to failure. How close a set is taken to failure will obviously influence how many reps are performed. If we take a set closer to failure, more reps will be performed than if we leave more reps in reserve. Therefore, trainees cannot necessarily gauge progress if proximity to failure is different. The next factor we need to consider before using performance to assess muscle growth is changes in fat mass. The amount of body fat that a trainee carries can influence lifting performance, primarily in compound lifts. Generally, increases in body fat lead to improvements in strength performance, and decreases in body fat can lead to reductions in strength by changing the biomechanics of the lift. When a trainee carries more body fat, they simply have more tissue surrounding the joints. When lifting, the joints flex and extend, causing the fat around the joints to push on each other and provide more structure to compress and provide an elastic bounce. 
This will have the biggest impact on compound pressing and squatting exercises like the bench press and back squat and the least influence on isolation lifts like a bicep curl or calf raise. This may be relevant for those going through massing and cutting phases where body fat will vary. And the last factor that can influence performance is rest periods. If a trainee rests longer between sets, then they can usually perform more reps on that next set. If rest periods are shorter, then trainees won't be able to perform as many reps on the next set or may have to reduce the load. Therefore, we also need to ensure rest periods are fairly consistent over time to actually compare performance for the goal of assessing muscle growth. So as we now understand, there are many variables that can influence our strength in the short and long term, which makes it more difficult to use performance as an assessment for muscle growth. However, here are some practical recommendations for trainees to use strength performance as a gauge for muscle growth. The first point is to make sure strength gains aren't the goal of hypertrophy training. The program shouldn't be aimed at trying to lift more weight over time. This may simply occur as a result of effective hypertrophy training. So strict and effective technique should always be the priority before worrying about increasing weight. Sometimes reducing the load may allow more effective technique and actually result in a better hypertrophic stimulus than using a heavier load with poor technique. So essentially, trainees should understand that strength gain isn't the ultimate goal of training for hypertrophy. The next practical recommendation is to compare performance with as many variables equated as possible. Since there are so many factors which can influence performance in the short term, trainees should try to look at performance in the same exercises with the same strict technique at the same body weight and so on. Otherwise, it may not be a fair comparison and the numbers won't truly reflect changes in muscle size. The last practical recommendation is to use long-term trends in performance rather than week-to-week -week performance. As we discussed, Factors such as exercise novelty, proximity to failure, and rest periods can all influence lifting performance in the short term and don't truly reflect changes in muscle size. Furthermore, it usually takes months and years to see noticeable muscle growth, so we already know that you aren't going to grow much from week to week. So trainees should look at how lifting performance is changing over multiple months and even over multiple years to gauge muscle growth. This is the best way trainees can use performance to assess muscle growth. If a trainee sees small but consistent performance improvements over a long period of time, this is a good indicator that the particular muscle group is growing. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.